Today we're talk about integration of sine to the m power, cosine to the n power when, when they're now even and odd, okay? So this is where we're mixing it up now. So I'm gonna give you the general strategy in dealing with these problems. So what if we wanted to integrate sine square root of x, cosine of x dx? So you can see that our powers are even and odd. This is a square term, this is one. Okay, well, this one is a simple one. Okay, so this one is a simple one. So in this case, you can definitely see that if I set u to be sine of x, then I have a cosine of x out here. Okay, and so in this case, if I set u to be sine of x, then the derivative is actually cosine of x dx, which is exactly what we have here. And so this becomes, this is equal to u squared du. Okay, and that is just simply equal to one third sine cube of x plus c okay so this one is pretty trivial uh, uh pretty pretty easy if you ask me so then let's get to the more challenging one so what if we wanted to integrate sine q of x cosine square of x dx okay how would we do it well again notice they're both one is even one is odd and so here's my general strategy you always borrow one from the odd one and then use your identity. So what do I mean? Well, notice that my sine is actually odd in this case. So I'm going to borrow one. So this becomes sine squared of x times cosine squared of x times sine of x dx. Notice this is the one I borrow one of those sine of x's. Okay. And so when I look at this now, I could use my identity. I could use my identity of sine, which is the one I just borrowed from, to get everything else in terms of cosine. And what that will allow me to do is use substitutions. So let's see. So this is actually equal to the integral of one minus cosine squared of x, because we know that's our identity for sine squared of x. I'm going to multiply by cosine squared of x times sine of x dx. Okay. So in this case, distributing this now becomes the integral of cosine squared of x minus cosine, cosine to the fourth of x, and we're gonna multiply that by sine of x dx, okay? So notice the same base, we just add our exponents, okay? So again, see the difference, see, see the style? I, I took one from the odd power and then used the identity on the actual one that I borrowed from. And so looking at my integral now, if I set u, so if I set u to be cosine of x, then my derivative is actually negative sine of x dx. We have a positive sine of x, but again, this is a constant, so we could fix it. So if we divide by a negative on both sides, well, this becomes negative du is equal to sine of x dx. And so we write an integral, this becomes negative, well, or u was cosine, so this becomes u squared minus u to the fourth, okay? du so there's our negative du that replaces our sine of x dx and then we just replace our u with our cosines okay remember this is being our negative is being distributed so when i take my integral this becomes negative one third u to the third plus one fifth u to the fifth plus c okay and so our integral now will be actually be given by one third negative one third actually uh, well, what's our u? Happens to be cosine, so that's be cosine q of x. Okay, we're going to add that to one fifth cosine to the fifth of x plus c. So there goes our integral. So again, you could see the general gist here. Uh, that is the general gist, okay? And so in this case, let's look at another one. Slightly more complicated one. So what if I wanted to take the integral of sine to the fourth of x? cosine to the fifth of x dx. Okay, how would we do it? Well, to me, it looks as if cosine is the odd power, so I'm gonna borrow one from that. So this is equal in magnitude to sine to the fourth of x, cosine to the fourth of x times cosine of x dx. So all I did was borrow one from the odd power, okay? Now remember we said we borrow one from that odd power, we're gonna use the identity. But before I use that, I wanna show you something. In this case, we gotta be very careful. So in this case, this integral is actually equal to integral of sine to the fourth of x 
times cosine squared of x squared times cosine of x dx. I wanted to show you this step. This step is very important. Okay. So notice that I rewrote cosine to the fourth of x as like this. Cosine squared of x squared. Okay. So we should be able to know that cosine squared of x is actually our identity. And then we have to square it to, to, for it to be equal to cosine to the fourth of x. And so if I look at this, my integral is actually given out by sine to the fourth of x times 1 minus sine squared of x squared times cosine of x dx. Okay. And so what is this squared? Actually, this is just, so what is this? Well, actually, what we're doing is actually formula it out. And so this is sine to the fourth of x. And again, if I rewrite, if I write this two times, so this is actually one minus sine squared of x times one minus sine squared of x. And if I factor that out, well, what will it give me? This will give me one minus two sine squared of x. That looks as if it's one minus two sine squared of x. And I'm gonna add that to sine to the fourth of x. Okay, I'm gonna multiply that cosine of x dx. Okay. Okay, so I want you to realize how where I got this from. I got this from multiplying this out. Okay, so I got this, this from doing one minus sine uh, squared of x times one minus sine squared of x. Okay, so this is how I got this, but I just did it in my head. But I wanted to show you that. Okay, and so once I get into this form, this becomes a simple u substitution when I uh, distribute. So. My integral now is going to be given by sine to the fourth of x minus 2 times sine. Well, 2 plus 4 is 6, so this is sine to the sixth of x plus sine to the eighth of x. Okay? And this is all being multiplied by cosine of x dx. And guys, I want to make a very important point here. Notice that I'm not distributing the one that I borrow. And it's the reason it makes it simpler. And the reason why I do that is because of you substitution. Okay, so whenever you borrow those, that one, don't distribute. Just keep it on the side. Okay. And so you could definitely see that we get to a point at this where now we could use u substitution. So if we're sending u to be sine of x, then our derivative is actually cosine of x dx. Okay, and so that's why we actually leave it out there. So don't distribute this back into the, the actual part where we're messing with. Okay. And so if I'm looking at this, well, I could rewrite this integral now as since our u is sine, so this becomes u to the fourth, which is sine to the fourth, minus two times u to the sixth, plus u to the eighth, okay, du, okay? Here, du represents cosine of x dx, and then all this is just our u we're substituting in, okay? And so if I look at this, well, my integral is actually given by, well, that's just uh, u to the fifth times one fifth minus two times u to the seventh divided by seven, okay, plus u to the nine times one ninth, okay, plus c. The only thing now is going to plug in my u. So remember, u was sine of x. So this becomes one fifth sine to the fifth of x minus two over seven times sine to the seventh of x plus one ninth sine to the ninth of x plus c. Okay, and this is my integral. So again, uh, yes, you could use this as some sort of practice, but the idea, the, the takeaway from this video is uh, once you see them being odd and even, you borrow from the odd power and then use your identity.